Welcome back. Today we're going to talk a little bit about layer masks. And if you're new to Photoshop, then this is a feature you definitely want to know about. And you want to make sure that you are kind of familiar with how it works. So what is it? If you have two images, let's say this one right here, where you do like the building, let's say, but then you, you're not too happy about the reflection. And let's just assume, and in this case I'm just obviously making that up, but let's just assume you have another image beneath that, where you do like the reflection more, because it's more natural, because it has something you want, or you know, you, you'll find a reason, right? Then what you can do is you select the top layer, all right, and you click the little Japanese flag symbol down here where it says add layer mask. And what will happen is a white square will appear or in the same dimensions of your image next to the layer you had selected previously. So a layer mask works as the same or following the same principle as a normal mask, I guess. So you can hide things, but you can also reveal things, okay? Let's just, if you just do it, you're going to see what I mean. So now we have a white layer mask. And as just with brightness, you can't hide in a bright day, if you're just standing in the middle of open, in an open area, let's say, then uh, nothing is hidden, right? So right now the layer mask is white. So everything from the layer, from this one right here, let's just zoom in there a little bit, everything from this layer right here, which has the layer mask, is actually visible. Good. Now let's say you want to hide certain parts. So in this case, if you remember, if we zoom out again, we say we don't like the water very much. We would like to have the water from the image beneath. So what you can do, you hit B on your keyboard, which will bring up your brush, and then you press D on the keyboard to get the default colors. And why is that important? Well, I can show you. Here on the side, you have your colors, which are currently on your brush, okay? Hitting D on the keyboard will set them back to the original default, D for default, which is black and white. And in this case, we have a white layer mask, so we want to use a black brush. So you have to make sure that black is the foreground color. If it is not, if it is like that, if white is the foreground color, you can just hit X on your keyboard and it'll swap it over. It always swaps between background and foreground. So once you have done that, you have your brush, you have a black, uh, the black color selected, and you have also the layer mask selected. So do not select the layer like this. If you want to hide certain areas, select the layer mask itself. Make the brush as big as you have to do it. Go for with an opacity you feel comfortable with, let's say 100% in this case, and just go over the image where you want to hide the parts of the layer you have selected and where you want to make things which are beneath visible, okay? Now, as you can see now in the in the big image here, we have combined the two images. So how does that look if we could have a closer look to the, to the thumbnails right here? So you see, this is our image also, which was on top and that's the image which was beneath. Now we have the layer mask, which is half black and half white. Where the layer mask is white, this layer will be visible. Where the layer mask is black, the layer beneath will be visible because remember black things or black color is hiding the layer. Huh? White is not hiding anything. So this example can be let's say made a bit, uh, how do you call it, maybe a bit broader. <laughs> so what you can do instead of with an opacity of 100% you can also paint with an opacity of 50%. Okay so if I just uh, remove what I just did by hitting command alt and z for one step back and I set my opacity which you can see up here to a 50%, which I just did by hitting the number 5 on the keyboard, and then I start painting. I can, you can see it's going to look a bit uh, dodgy, but that's completely fine. Then what will happen, and I can show you that again if I zoom in down here. Now instead of black and white, we have gray, okay? And this case means that within the gray area, because we had an opacity of 50%, 50% of this layer will show, and 50% of this layer will show within that area right here. So that is the basic principle of a layer mask, okay? A white layer mask will show everything from that layer, and a black layer mask will hide it, and gray will basically end up in a mixture of the two of them. Layer masks also work for any kind of adjustments you want to do. For example, if you do a curve adjustment, and you, let's say, decrease the, the brightness, then interestingly, this is kind of already a layer mask. So what you can do, you take your brush, and you start painting, and if I paint with um, black, I'm going to hide this effect wherever I feel like. And if we have a look right here, okay, so you see it's on the same kind of level or indent as the layer mask. So now we have a white area on that curve adjustment layer, but we also have a black, or let's say dark gray, because I just had 50%, remember, a dark gray area on the top of that layer mask. And what that means is that the darkness we have just created will just be visible in the water, because the layer mask is white there, and will not uh, be as visible in the top where the building is. It also works for groups. So if you were to select, let's say, these two, um, these two layers, so the curve adjustment layer and the, yeah, the layer we had before, right? 
and I hold shift and I just click on this one, which will select them both. And then I hit command alt G, not G, just command and G, sorry. Then I create a group. Okay, so now you have them in a group. And if you select a layer mask now, it's going to put a layer mask on the whole group. Okay, so if I feel like I can now hide again with my brush and 100% of opacity, I could just basically hide the whole thing like that. So you see now everything which is which is everything words, learn to speak, Philip. Everything which is in that group on top on the top part here will not be visible, and the white part will be visible. So that's the basic principle of layer masks. You can do a couple of things more. You can, for example, hold shift on your keyboard and then click on that layer mask, and that'll just simply hide the layer mask. It's gonna disable it. Okay. You can also do that by right-click and go to disable layer mask. Or you press Alt on your keyboard and click on the layer mask. And that will just show you in a sort of magnified version of uh, what you can see here in the thumbnail, what are the colors or the distribution of black and white or gray in this case, maybe as well on that layer mask. And then just click again and it's going to be done. So layer masks are really important, at least for the kind of work I'm doing, because I'm constantly using it to combine different kind of images and create a new one, right? And also when you do an adjustment, then you don't want the adjustment to be global. You don't want the adjustment to affect the whole image, but sometimes just certain areas within that image. And for this, layer masks will do the trick perfectly. That's going to be it, guys. That's, that should get you started in how to use the layer masks in Photoshop. If you have any questions, please do not forget to drop them below the video or in the blog or wherever you feel like. And also, if you haven't already, please do press that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done that either, then you should definitely subscribe to the channel. That's going to be it, guys. I'll see you later. Bye!